My name is Barsha Koch. I'm from Ward 17. I work as a store manager at Freedom Mobile as an essential worker. Let me begin by saying thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you all today. I'm here to speak with you all today for regarding the unique challenges COVID-19 has presented for the elderly, and especially for those who are in long-term care and hospice. The story I'm about to share is a personal one, but the sentiment and challenges are widespread and relatable. This is a story about my mother, who was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2018. She battled cancer for two years, and she passed away on June 23rd, 2020, while she was in hospice care. Although tough, I, I wish more could have been done to make her last days less lonely. She was at hospice for two weeks and distance was required to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but the regulation made our goodbye feel inhuman. Only one person from the family was allowed to go visit her every other day. This increased the personal struggle for my mother as well as a family as we could not physically be there for each other. This caused, sorry, <laughs> this caused a mental toll on my mother, that brave woman that she fought for many years for this cancer. She was ready to give up. She passed away two days later. There are still many people who continue to face these challenges while we keep fighting against the very scary and real virus. This experience is isolated to residents at hospice. These feelings of hopelessness, of growing depression are haunting the elderly in long-term cares. The long-term care residents have not only been isolated from their families, but have been confined to their rooms without congregating dining activities or any personal visits. The lack of exercise, direct sunlight and fresh air and a normal level of social interaction. This quote was taken from Psychotic Time. While technology has helped us to bridge the gap through video calls, Zoom meetings, these options are not very user-friendly for many older generation. I have experienced the first hand working in the telecommunication industry. Due to lack of social interaction, our tools to help seniors encourage the technology to aid social interaction. News headlines like Nancy Russell, 90 year old, chooses medically assisted death. Over the isolation from COVID-19 restrictions, has begun to highlight the deep impact that social isolation has had to residents of a hospice and the long-term care homes. Here is another quote from Psychiatric Time. The psychological stress of social isolations can be particularly jarring for these individuals, even those are already climbed to some degree of pre-existing isolation. They spend most of their time in their home, in their rooms, without in-person contact with their family or their loved ones. They are surrounded by staff members, redundant, they're less familiar due to mask gowns and face shield. Hearing and visual loss can make effective communication very difficult through multiple layers of personal protective equipment as well. This has put undue pressure on healthcare workers to protect themselves while acting as a surrogate families for residency support. Here is some stats shows that death rate has been increased in long-term care. Last year, June 1st, then death rate was in a long-term was 28%, which was 1,465. Now, as of June, uh, January 19, 2021, death rate has been increased to 58%, which is 3,274. Due to such hardship, I sincerely ask the board to consider budgeting to help resolve the very damaging impact isolation is having on seniors. This can be following in many ways, such as allocate more funds to create more position and roles to where residents can be provided means and help to fund technology to connect with their friends and family more often, funding the more equipments to help connecting with their family and neighbors, allowing family members who has shown their negative result for COVID-19 to visit and spend more time in the long-term care homes, provide more opportunity to online social activities as a virtual bingo and musical concert and multicultural uh, amazement work online, considering the diversity of Toronto, assign more funds and build culturally specific long-term care and nursing homes while which will also help to reduce the isolation and mental stress to, to racialized and newcomer seniors from various ethnic groups. Lastly, provide additional funding, fully implement the Toronto Senior Strategy, as well as senior services and long-term care. Well, the reality remains that COVID-19 has been extremely challenging in a multitude of aspects. I hope the Budget Committee and the City Council will recognize and understand the time to help 
bring some normalcy back to the lives of seniors and residents of long-term cares and seniors housing. And this is cause worthy of deserving place in a city budget. Thank you for your time.